Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome once again to an ODQ and a video right here on ODQ.com and the YouTube channel. As a reminder, NoDQ.com will have live coverage of TNA Bound for Glory on Sunday night, so make sure you stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest. With that being said, let's get right down to your questions via spring.me slash Aaron Rift. First one today comes from Wyatt Sin. Hi Aaron, love your show and how you always give unbiased answers. Do I now? I don't know if the TNA apologists will agree with you on that, but anyways, back to the question here. I'd like your take on the Bella Twins and why WWE is pushing them babyface when even in Total Divas they're shown as heels. And I agree with you, they cannot act worth crap. Well, the idea, the theory is that since people know anyways that Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella are dating in real life, that fans will cheer for Brie Bella uh, just because of her association with Daniel Bryan alone. Now, as it turns out, that's not really the case. Um, I think you nailed it here when you said they can't act worth crap, and I think that that's a main reason why they're not really over. You know, I, I know they have their fan base, the, the girls that go on Tumblr and always post pictures of them, and, you know, they're the role models to the 12-year-old girls, but, I mean, they're not good in the ring. Their acting skills suck, and um, you know people see them for what they are, and that's eye candy and uh, really nothing more. I mean, that's the only thing that they bring to the table, and the fact that they're twins, they're unique in that regard. Um, so yeah, I mean that that's why it's not working, and um, you know WWE was just going on the idea that Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella as a couple would make Brie Bella babyface, but you know it's not working so. You know, I don't. I don't know what's going to happen. Where the storyline's going to go, if they're going to try to turn Brie Bella on Daniel Bryan, and uh, we all know how that works in wrestling when uh, when couples split up in storyline. You know, often real life imitates art. So you know, hopefully uh, WWE just eventually just drops the storyline altogether and uh, have Daniel Bryan you know not associate with her on television. I think that that would be the best way to go. Alright, this one comes from Nick Lombardi9. Hey Aaron, what do you think about the Royal Rumble? I think WWE needs to do something different besides just using it to build up feuds. I think someone unexpected should win. Not re unrealistic like Santino, but unexpected like Tyson Kidd or Christian or Dolph Ziggler. Here's the problem with doing that. Every year WWE has, uh, has built up this idea that the Royal Rumble winner gets the main event spot at WrestleMania. And if somebody like Tyson Kidd was to win the Royal Rumble, um, in all likelihood, WWE would just throw him in a uh, opening match for the world title, uh, something like that that um, really devalues the Royal Rumble win. I mean, the Rumble win should be something huge and should give you the main event at WrestleMania. So unless you are planning to push a guy like Tyson Kidd in the actual main event at WrestleMania, then I don't think it's a good idea to do that. Um, the best case situation would be for somebody who is rising to the top in WWE but isn't quite there yet on television, um, somebody who is on the verge of, of getting that main event spot, or somebody who WWE is planning uh, to put in the main event spot, somebody who has some kind of momentum. Um, you know, the, the, the best way to go would be to have that person win the Rumble and then WWE goes all the way with them at WrestleMania. Um, you know, the, the best example I can give is um, Stone Cold Steve Austin when he won the 97 Rumble. You know, that was right when he was starting to get hot and he wasn't yet a main event superstar. I mean, he was on his way to being one, but, you know, he was he was still rising up to the top. So, I mean, that's the way you want to go. And, um, you know, I don't know if Tyson Kidd is the answer. I don't, I don't think that that would be a good idea unless there's something that happens and he ends up being... Uh, your next main event superstar, which I, I think is highly unlikely. All right, this one comes from Ultimate um, G-I-Y-G-A-S, and I'm going to try to pronounce that one. Hey, Aaron, do you think that at Survivor Series we could see a Team Triple H versus Team Big Show? With Triple H, uh, he could have the shield. As for, as for the others, it could be up for debate. 
I wouldn't mind seeing that. You know, I, I think that you should definitely have a big Survivor Series team match like you do every year, and that's something that makes Survivor Series unique. Um, so, you know, they, they got to do something there. Um, and you could always have Team Triple H versus Team Big Show and then save the big singles one-on-one -on -one match for TLC. And then at that point, you can have a stipulation, and the stipulation would make sense because it's... Uh, a way to settle the feud, and you already had them uh, against each other against each other at Survivor Series. So, you know, I I think that that would be a good way to go, and um, could end up being Team Morton versus Team Brian. But you know, I really don't want to see that feud drag out any longer. I think that um, Hell in the Cell should be the end for that feud. Um, so yeah, I mean, time will tell uh, what they actually do. I mean, anything. Uh, would not surprise me at this point. I mean, they could do a singles match. They could do the, the tag match. Um, I think the tag match is the best way to go for Survivor Series. All right, this one comes from Freaky Fairy. Could you see Dean Ambrose retaining his title for a while, which would allow him to act more arrogant and, re and remind the other members of the Shield that he still has his title? This way he can keep the title, and it gives the Shield an okay reason to split up. Uh, that's an interesting storyline proposal that you have given here, and um, you know that could be one way you could start a potential breakup of the Shield is have Dean Ambrose get frustrated with the other members. Uh, you know he still has a title and they don't, and um, you know that could lead to the breakup. You know I I, I think Dean Ambrose is definitely uh, better off as a heel, and um, you know I I could very well see Roman Reigns turning face at some point. I mean I definitely see him as the most potential in terms of being a babyface, and um, I think Seth Rollins could go either way. Um, but Ambrose, you know he's just uh, good at, at at playing that arrogant character, and um, you know I think he would be best to initiate the breakup and be the one to say you know I'm done with you guys and I'm going off on my own. And then uh, you could possibly keep um, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins together as a team for a while and uh, keep that going. I mean, I, I talked about in previous videos how I, I, I think it's time to start um, um, working towards a split with them. Um, but, you know, I've been enjoying their matches so much that, um, you know, I just don't want it to end. I mean, I, I would be perfectly fine with the Shield having six-man matches for another year. I mean, they've had some of the best matches of 2013 and... Uh, I don't think they've had any bad matches, uh, to be honest. I mean, they, they've, they've just been tremendous every week on Raw. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. But, I mean, that would definitely be a good way to, uh, to split that group up. All right, this one comes from KidRaf543. Um, what are the best wrestling books you've read? I really like Bret Hart's and Mick Foley's first book, which was excellent. I thought Shawn Michaels sucked, though. Um... Yeah, definitely Mick Foley's first book. That, I mean, that was the one that really set the standard for, for wrestling books. And um, he was a guy that went out there and, and wrote what, he, what was on his mind and, um, you know, his story. And it became a, a New York Times bestseller. And then everybody followed suit from there. So, I mean, you have to put Mick Foley's book at the top of the list of the best wrestling books. And um, as you mentioned, Bret Hart's book. I mean, I think Bret's was perhaps the most honest. I mean, he really... Uh, he poured his heart out in that book, and um, you know it was a very interesting read. Um, the thing I found funny about both Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels' books is, um, you know, in each book they talk about the infamous brawl that they had, the real life backstage fight in '97, and in Bret Hart's book he said that Shawn Michaels threw the first punch, and in Shawn Michaels' book he says that Bret Hart threw the first punch and missed. Actually, both of them said the other guy threw the first punch and missed. So I actually thought that that was hilarious, and um, and you know Shawn Michaels' book was okay, but I would definitely put Mick Foley's book at the top and then Bret Hart's. Um, this one comes from B A X Seven X. Oh, and real quick, um, I actually wanted to mention Freddie Blassie's book. I thought it was really good and um, interesting to read, and it, it gives you some insight into the old days of wrestling. Um, so you know I would put Blassie's book up there. Now that's one I don't think a lot of people talk about, so I'll just throw that out there. Anyways, back to uh, back 7 xs question. Do you think Jim Johnston will ever be in the Hall of Fame after the many years of contribution he has put towards WWE? I think it is about time he is. Um, I think I've talked about this before, but I'll mention it again. 
Absolutely. Um, you know, Jim Johnson should definitely be in the Hall of Fame. And, and uh, when you look at guys that work behind the scenes, I mean, some people love him, some people hate him. I mean, Kevin Dunn should be in there. He's been a big player in WWE. And, um, of course, Jim Johnson has produced so many memorable theme songs over the years. Um, you know, him going in is, um, you know, in my opinion, a, a no-brainer. And I, I, I hope uh, I hope they do it for WrestleMania 30. I think that that would be perfect because he's been such a big part of WWE history and the history of WrestleMania uh, with all the theme music over the years. So you know, that would be uh, an ideal place, I think, to put him in. All right, that'll do it for this edition of No DQ and a video. Subscribe, youtube.com slash no DQCAW. Do not click off this video yet because I'm still talking. And um, share this video on Facebook. Twitter, wherever else you go, post a YouTube video, plug in ODQ and a video. And um, as I said at the beginning, stay tuned to NoDQ.com uh, for the very latest regarding Bound for Glory and Hell in the Cell. I mean, we got a lot of pay-per-views this month, uh, three big ones. Uh, we already had Battleground, we got Bound for Glory, and then uh, Hell in the Cell next week. So it, it's going to be a busy uh, busy week or two here on ODQ.com. So stay tuned for all the latest, and I will see you guys next time for more.